OSU alumna Sarah Coburn takes center stage, and we have the best seat in the house. Welcome to Inside OSU. back at your alma mater. How does it feel to be back in Stillwater? It feels great. I just ran across the street and thought, oh my goodness, I'm back in college after I parked my car and ran over here. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, you know, how many years ago was that? I don't want to say. <laughs> feels great to be back. Do you have a favorite memory from your time as a student here at OSU? Oh my goodness. If I think about my time as a student in the School of Music, I would say my favorite time was being a part of the chamber choir, and we would do these madrigal dinners at the student union um, at Christmas time in costumes with jesters and greenery and a big boar's head, and we would sing these beautiful, beautiful songs. Um, I think that would probably be one of my favorite memories. Back in 2014, you were part of a Night of Orange and Black at okay. Oklahoma yes. State. Yes. <laughs> and that night sort of helped kickstart the new Performing Arts Center right. space at Oklahoma State. And now we're back in McKnight, the finished product. What does it mean to get the opportunity to perform here now What at what you started seven, eight years ago and now in the finished product? It's amazing. It's surreal walking up to the the front of the building. It's gorgeous. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of shocking to see it on campus. It's wonderful. I mean, I'm thrilled to be invited to come back. I'm sorry it took so long to get back with all the rescheduling, but I mean, it's amazing to walk in this building and see just the state-of-the-art performance hall that it is. Do you remember your first time coming to McKnight after its completion? I've never been here. This is your first time here? Mm -hmm. I did not realize that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So this is your first time right. in Right. I this just walked building. in. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's fabulous. I can't oh wait to see the rest. Oh my gosh. This that just makes this even more exciting. Like what are your emotions right now thinking about where you sang in college and that venue compared to this? Well, you know, I can't wait to see it. I really I haven't seen it yet. I've seen pictures. Um, but I think it's going to be great. The Seratine Center has wonderful memories for me, but in terms of a concert hall, it really wasn't ideal, and I think that this is going to attract, um, it already has attracted musicians to come in and perform, but it's going to attract students to want to come to a school with this kind of facility. It's pretty top notch. You were inducted into Oklahoma State's Hall of Fame in 2018, which is a huge honor. What did that mean to you when you got the call? It was a huge honor, and to be among the people um, that were up there that night, it just felt uh, surreal. It, it was wonderful. I love OSU and I think it's, it's the real foundation of my musical education and experience. Um, when I went out into the world of performing, I saw a lot of students who had kind of coasted their way through the academic parts of their degrees because they just focused on performance. And I think that OSU really gave me a foundation for musicality and scholarship and just being a well-rounded student in general and I really am thankful for that. And you are also doing a residency while you're here yes. this week in Stillwater. But for yes. those who aren't as familiar with this type of residency, what is it? It's partnering with the faculty and partnering with the students, just kind of as a visiting um, coach in a way, but I don't consider myself a voice teacher really. I don't spend that much time teaching voice. I'm just hoping to relay some of my experiences and um, maybe some technical things, but you can't do that in such a short time. Non vi fate sentir per carità. So how do you do that where you're whispering but you're also audible? How do you do that? More diction? Sure. Try that. Okay. But keep that sound going. Okay. Non vi fate sentir per carità. You can't really impart something new. The voice is such a complex instrument and so it takes time. It's a very individual thing. It's a very personal thing. So my hope is that I can inspire freedom and letting go of perfectionism and those kinds of things, um, the more of the psychological parts of singing while I'm here. If there are technical breakthroughs while we're here, if I have something that I could add, I'm thrilled. But I think it's basically just kind of 
sharing what my experience has been in the real world out there performing for 20 years. Okay, stop. Why is the straight tone on Pito and Rai? Tell me why. Vibrate for those on those for me, and that will help okay. you to keep going. What is your favorite part about getting to work with students and teach master classes? That I'm not the one on the other side. <laughs> it's, it's really difficult to be on stage in a master class setting. It is really, truly the, the nightmare of being naked on stage because you're being undone in front of an audience. You're supposed to come up and feel polished and all it, your presentation is there and then you have someone who's been paid to come in and tear you apart and basically build you back up in 15 minutes and that is really scary. So I do not envy them on that side of this. I'm going to be very gentle and try to make it fun and light, but yeah, my favorite part is just not being on the other side. <laughs> How do you think you're going to feel on Saturday night when you actually take the McKnight Center stage? Happy, joyful. I feel very thankful to be alive, to be healthy, and to be able to do this. It's really just um, a gift, I feel, for myself and that I hope that I can give to the people that are here. <laughs>